I'm Alex Schweitzer, Community Involvement Leader with Sask Energy. It is my pleasure to provide greetings today on behalf of Sask Energy as we celebrate the Willow Awards and the top children's and youth literature authors across Canada. Sask Energy is honoured to continue our more than 15 year sponsorship of the Willow Awards in support of literacy in schools throughout Saskatchewan. We are proud to contribute to an initiative that not only encourages students to read books, but also helps them develop a love for reading that will last a lifetime. Congratulations to all of the authors who had their books shortlisted for these awards. Your work has engaged young readers and fostered their love of learning. To the volunteers and teachers, thank you for dedicating your time to promoting literacy and readership in our province. Without your efforts, these awards and their positive impacts would not be possible. Finally, I'd like to say great job to all of the students for reading the nominated books and participating in the Willow Awards voting. Despite the challenges we've all faced during this past year, it is encouraging to see how the Willow Awards continue to have a positive effect on Saskatchewan students. Once again, congratulations to all of the students, the authors, and everyone who makes the Willow Awards a success each year. Well done, and I'm excited to see the winners of the 2021 Willow Awards. Thank you. I'm Sophia, and I'm a Willow reader. I am Haley, and I am a Willow reader. Here are the Shining Willow nominees. Oasis and the World Famous Bannock. Boxy Text. Emma's Gems. How to Give Your Cat a Bath in Five Easy Steps. Karate Kakapa. Princess Puffy Bottom and Daryl. Robert Bateman, The Boy Who Painted Nature. The Silence Slips In. Triceratops Stump. And the 2020 Shining Willow winner is Sergeant Billy, The True Story of the Goat Who Went to War. I am Luca, and I am a Willow Reader. I am Nadia Lee, and I am a Willow Reader. Here are the Diamond Willow nominees. Acting in Wild, How We Behave Like Birds, Bugs, and Beasts. Camp Average. The Collected Works of Gretchen Oyster. Girl of the Southern Sea. Missing Mike. My deal with the universe. A royal guide to monster slaying. Tales from beyond the brain. Too young to escape. A Vietnamese girl waits to be reunited with her family. And the 2020 Diamond Willow winner is... Harvey Comes Home! I'm Rhett, and I'm a Willow Reader. I'm Lucas, and I'm a Willow Reader. And together we're going to go over the 2020 Snow Willow nominees. This Place, 150 Years Retold. The Center of the Universe. The Justice Project. The Journey of Little Charlie. Safe Harbor. Funny, you don't look autistic. Broken Strings. Sadia. Trail of Crumbs. And the 2020 Snow Willow winner is Don't Tell the Nazis.
when I wrote this book, of course, this is the first book that I write that is a true story. A lot of my other books are inspired by real things. So maybe something that happened to me or something I read in a book or something that happened to me when I was a kid or happened to my friends, etc. So a lot of my inspiration comes from real events. But then I usually take the real event and then invent a story around that. And this time, well, when I heard about Sergeant Billy, I wanted to be sure that I told his story exactly how it really happened. And so this was a different kind of book for me. It was a book that was a real story, so we would say nonfiction. So that meant doing a lot of research. These illustrations were done by Cass Reich. They're beautiful illustrations. And did you notice all the beautiful colors that Cass uses? So because the story takes place a hundred years ago, Cass made sure to use colors that would remind us of the olden days. So lots of grays and greens and browns. So you kind of got that feeling that the story took place a long, long time ago. How did you find out about Billy? That's a really good question. I, as you can see, I am somebody who reads a lot. I love books. I go to the library all the time and I read all types of books. I read nonfiction and fiction and magazines and tons of things. And one time I was reading this magazine, which is kind of a, it's kind of a fun magazine that has lots of information about lots of different things. And I came across this little article called five goats that changed the world and the first goat that was mentioned was sergeant billy a canadian goat and i thought well i have never heard of sergeant billy who is this and so from this i started doing a little bit more research and then i found all these interesting things and i thought well for sure somebody's already written a story about sergeant billy and they hadn't and so I thought, ah, it's my chance. I will write Sergeant Billy's story. And so I did more research and I started working on a story. And that's the story that you read today. So that was, it was kind of serendipitous. So you never know where your story ideas are going to come from. Um, quick question. How long did it take you to make Harvey Comes Home? Great question. Um, so Harvey, let's see, it took about a year because there was a lot of research in this book. Um, but the funny thing with Harvey is that the version that I sent to Pajama Press, it took them a year to get back to me. And then when they did, it was the editor and she said um, that she really liked it. She liked the parts about Walter and she liked the Harvey parts, but there was no Austin at that point. Instead, there was a nurse. She said, you know, why don't you go back in and you need to get a younger main character. And so that's how Austin came to be. So Austin wasn't there in the first draft. Once I added Austin in, all of a sudden the book just made so much more sense. It was so much more fun to write also. So yeah, once Austin came in that, you know, the rewrites took a few more months and then I sent it back and then it was Anne Featherstone as the editor. And so then they you know, Anne said, yes, okay, now you've got something. And then that's when they accepted it. So, you know, if you look at the day I started it until the day it came out, it was probably about close to three and a half years. Um, but a year of that was waiting to hear back from the editor. And then another good chunk of that a year was doing edits. So books are funny, they take a long time. That was my first book called Tori by Design, which was actually also nominated for a Willow Award way back when. Um, I have it somewhere here. This is Tori by Design. So the very first award I ever got nominated for was a Willow Award. So that's why the Willows are super special to me. Um, did you learn anything like while writing the book? 
That's an excellent question. I learned so much, especially about the depression. You know, one of the reasons that I wanted to focus on that time period was because um, when I was a teacher librarian, one of the teachers wanted to do lit circles and she wanted to do a different decade for each lit circle. And we couldn't find very many books that focused on the depression, even though it was such a, um, it like obviously an important time period, but what talk about struggles, like people who survived for the depression, it was a major, major event that really affected them throughout their lives. So um, that was part of the reason that I placed it during the 1930s. And um, so I, I knew some things about the depression, but I definitely learned a lot. I, I am of Ukrainian heritage. Uh, I was born in Canada. Um, and so stories that are about people who are of Ukrainian heritage have always interested me. And so I've written a lot of books on those topics, but I've written a lot of books about other people too. Basically what I'm always interested in is telling stories about people whose stories haven't been told and who have a really interesting story. And so the scenes in the book are all based on what really happened to Christia, the real person. Now I did change some things. One of the things, the big thing that I changed um, is her age. And that's because when Making Bombs for Hitler came out, Lida in Making Bombs for Hitler was, um, she was eight or nine, she's just turned nine. And I was criticized by that because many adults said that there's no way that a nine-year-old would do all these things. Well, I, I disagree because that's actually not true. Um, I uh, have a book, it's called uh, Hitler's Slaves, and it's um, uh, interviews with 5,000 um, uh, slaves, like former slaves. And the youngest one that testified was five years old when he was captured. When you're captured by the enemy and forced to do things like make bombs, you grow up really quickly. And so for people to say that it wasn't accurate, they just lived a very privileged life and they didn't understand what it was like to have to go through tough times. But in any case, I thought no one is going to believe me that um, she, again, she was about that age. She was uh, nine years old, that she would have done everything that she did of her own free will at that age. Now, the other thing that I changed too was that her friends um, who she hid were much older than her. They were actually older teenage boys. I changed that too, because in today's um, world, uh, people might misunderstand and think that she was manipulated as a child into helping adults. Um, so, th but that's not true because again, during a war situation, she grew up really quickly and they were like her brothers because um, their mother uh, tried to save her father's life and uh, they were over at each other's house all the time. Uh, they were, it was like one big family really because they were that close. And so of course she was going to try and do everything that she could of her own free will to try and save them just like her mother did because they were that close. But you know, you have to think in terms of a writer uh, and a reader and what people now can accept of the past. So that's why I changed that. Hi, I'm Weston. I'm in grade eight, and I uh, hi. hi. Um, so my question is, did you ever have to like stop writing it because of the emotions that you felt? I I did. Um, my own father-in-law, who lived just about an hour away from where Christia lived as a child, died. And he had a, like similar experiences to her because he had been a kid during the war um, and he escaped um, a Nazi death, he escaped Soviet death. And then um, as a, you know, in his mid nineties, he died. And so I ended up having to set aside the entire manuscript for about a year. Mm -hmm. 